So Rousseau is tracing this origin of society and um, um, he begins to sketch out in the second part what it was like when, when we, people first began living together. And he says the following, everything begins to change in appearance. The more they see each other, we see each other really, human beings, the more they see each other, the less they can do without seeing one another still more. And for Rousseau, that's both a sweet thing and of course a very dangerous thing. The more they see one another, the less they can do without seeing one another still more. A tender and sweet sentiment steals into the soul, and at the least obstacle becomes an impetuous frenzy. Jealousy awakens together with love. In other words, we want to see one another, and then what if the other person doesn't want to see us, etc. Discord triumphs, and the greatest of all passion receives sacrifices of human blood. So, you know, for Rousseau, it's we start to live together, and then we start to want each other. And when we want each other, that's sweet and lovely, but it also breeds conflict. It also breeds conflict. Um, and then the Rousseauian theme of, of, of how we, we, um, we begin to look at each other. And as we look at each other, we begin to act for the other so that we appear the way we think. We want to appear the way we want to be seen, which is a departure from how we just act naturally. Let me give you Rousseau's sentence. Everyone began to look at everyone else. This is really bad. Everyone began to look at everyone else and to wish to be looked at himself. And public esteem acquired a value. And so this is very dangerous. The fermentation caused by these new leavens eventually produced compounds fatal to happiness and innocence. Because when we begin to want to appear in a certain way for the other, we begin to be fakers, we begin to be hypocrites, we begin to, to leave who we really were and begin to try to be something for somebody else. And as inequality goes along, its route goes along, its dynamic, we begin to imitate people who we think of as our betters, thereby becoming less and less like our true selves. And so for Rousseau, it's, it's fine to have a self-love in the sense of wanting to preserve yourself, in the sense of wanting to protect your life and, to, and have the sense of self-preservation. But what is born here is vanity, because we begin again to um, want to be someone who we are not, just so that we can please another. Um, and what happens as this goes on, as we begin to act for someone else, that's another way to think of it. Think we become, we become actors. We try to act for someone else. Um, we, we think we need things. We think we need certain goods. We think we need certain accoutrements, certain uh, uh, luxuries, if you will. We, th we, we think we need them. They're not, they don't seem like luxuries anymore. We need those things to be who we think we are. And for Rousseau, this means that conveniences become needs. That is, the things we, that we just acquired uh, uh, because they were fun to have or we liked having them, those things now become necessities. We begin, oh, I can't live without that. You know, I can't live without my fancy white shirt. I can't live without my fancy boots, etc., etc. The things that were at one point luxuries or conveniences now become needs. Rousseau puts it this way, since these conveniences by becoming habitual had almost entirely ceased to be enjoyable and at the same time degenerated into true needs, it became much more cruel to be deprived of them than to possess them was sweet. And men were unhappy to lose them without being happy to possess them. This is key for Rousseau. So in this society where you begin to act for another person, you say, well, I need new cufflinks, or I need a new tie, or I need... And then you say, but once you have it, you think, well, you know, I just have this tie. It doesn't really give me any pleasure to have the tie anymore. But when I lost the tie, I couldn't find the tie. That really hurts. That really, I really hate that. Um, so when you, the, the, the dynamic here is that you desire something, and when you get it, it doesn't, after a while, you don't get any pleasure from it. But if you lose it, if you lose it, it causes you pain. And what happens here, then, is you become more vulnerable to pain. As you acquire luxuries, you become more vulnerable to pain, because the luxuries you acquire after a while, you get, just get habituated to them. They become just part of your life, and you don't get pleasure from them. But if somebody takes it, or somebody scratches it, or somebody damages it, that hurts. And that, for Rousseau, 
Uh, that increased vulnerability goes along with this increased hypocrisy, um, um, and all of it is stimulated by um, this dynamic of inequality. Rousseau talks, though, before he shows how the slippery slope of inequality uh, uh, accelerates, um, uh, he, he does pause to say there is a moment before vanity gets too bad, before luxuries kick in too much. Although men now had less endurance and natural pity had already undergone some modification, this period in the development of the human faculties occupying a just mean between indolence and the primitive state and the petulant activity of our vanity must have been the happiness happiest and the longest lasting epoch. Rousseau calls this the youth of the world. When um, uh, our human faculties had, had already been modified some, but there's, he says, a just mean between indolence of the pr primitive state and the petulant activity of our vanity. In other words, vanity isn't too bad, luxury isn't too bad, um, and there's a sweetness of social relations. That for him is kind of our adolescence, when things really were uh, in sync uh, before we began to um, uh, slide down the slippery slope of inequality, vanity, and hypocrisy. Um, what really pushes us down that slope is the state, is the origin of the state. Um, and you see this uh, uh, in the last sections or the second half of, the, of, of, of part two. Um, the state becomes the guarantor of the process of inequality. I'm reading now uh, from page 183. Sometimes it's, uh, not some editions it's 172, some of the gravest translations. Lacking valid reasons to justify and sufficient strength to defend him, himself, the rich, under the pressure of necessity, at last conceived the most well-considered project ever to enter man's mind. The rich conceive of this project. It's important. So the state is a product of the wealthy man's mind. To use even his attacker's forces in his favor, to make his adversaries his defenders, to instill in them other maxims, and to give them different institutions as favorable to himself as natural right was contrary to him. In other words, the rich create a scheme to t get the poor to defend property. If you can get the poor to defend property via the state, its police forces, its armies, then the, the, the rich benefit from the a political arrangement that guarantees their own uh, um, superiority in, a, in conditions of inequality. The state, therefore, according to Rousseau, is created to keep the wealthy wealthy and to keep the poor poor. Now, this is a radical thing to say any time, really, but especially in the 18th century, when the society is built on inequality. Remember that. We have the three estates, right? The clergy, the nobility, and the peasants, or middle classes. And the, so inequality is built into the state. Um, and Rousseau says the state is there not to protect the peasants or the middle class people. The state is there to guarantee that the wealthy can still lord it over the rest of us. So he writes on page 183, or sometimes in some editions it's 173, all ran headlong into their chains in the belief that they were securing their freedom. They ran, we ran headlong into our chains in the belief that we were securing our freedom. For while they had enough reason to sense the advantages of political establishment, they had not enough experience to foresee its dangers. Now Rousseau here is arguing against um, uh, the the uh, social contract theorists who say, well, the state was created because people exchange a portion of their freedom for security. Rousseau says, no, we don't need security. We without property, the people who need security are the rich people. They dupe the rest of us into supporting a state that protects inequality. And inequality means, uh, for Rousseau, the wealthy protect their property via political arrangements. And this allows not only for the perpetuation of their superior social and economic status, but it creates a situation where the rest of society em wants to emulate the rich, tries to become rich, corrupting themselves even further. So on the one hand, they suffer because they're poor, and then they suffer in the soul because they, they, they think the, the key to salvation is the acquisition of wealth that is becoming superior to other people. Rousseau has uh, uh, very many pointed things to say about the wealthy classes of his time. 
um, uh, like this on, on page 185, the rich being so, so to speak sensitive in every part of their goods. It was much easier to hurt them and that they consequently had to take more precautions to protect themselves. What he's saying here is rich people are sensitive, are so sensitive because you can hurt, they, they protect their fancy cars in our time, they protect their fancy castles, they protect their fancy clothes, they, anything you, they have so many ways in which they, they, they um, uh, uh, have, have invested in luxuries that they, they are sensitive as he said, in all part of their, every part of their goods. My, my favorite sentence, I was going to wait till next time, my favorite sentence in the reading for this week is, is uh, from the second discourse. He says, rich people are so sensitive, they have feelings in all of their possessions. <laughs> now, it's a great insight, is that what had been kind of a, a cool thing then becomes a necessity. You know, I, I had a, uh, my first car was a Chevy Nova, which my father got from a guy who owed him a favor. I never really understood if I was if I could stop by a cop if I you know go to jail. Anyway, it was an old car when I got it, and it had lots of nicks in it, and, you know. And uh, so I would drive around. I was a maniac because I didn't care if I hit anything because the car was that kind of car. Like, you like well, another dent? It's cool, <laughs> you know. So you know, and I, I, so I was driving around, and and then I. And, and, and so I would come out in the morning and somebody might say, oh man, there's a new scratch in your car. And I'm like, yeah, okay. It's my Nova. And then when I came to Wesleyan, I got myself a green Camaro. It was a, it was a neat car. It was a used car. It was a pretty old also, but it was pretty cool. And I would park it over there by Alpha Del. And in those days, what is now the Social Justice House was the, um, the most, how should I put this? Uh, it was a fraternity for people who were on the fifth string of the football team. Um, um, let's say. Um, um, Kai Sai, they recall. They used to beat us up all the time, uh, which we thought was the side of our moral, moral purity. Um, but I would park my green Camaro in the parking lot, I'd come out in the morning, and I'd be like, is it okay? Is there a scratch in it? I had feelings in my possession, right? The Nova had those windows with the crank, you know? You see that, right? And then my Camaro I had a push-button window thing that never worked. But I had feelings in my push-button window thing. Right? We had feelings in all our possessions. And so what's, what, what happens with luxuries is they quickly become something that you need. Arts and sciences for Rousseau are divorced from our needs because they become ornamental. And so for Rousseau, I become more vulnerable. With every luxury that I acquire and that I let become a necessity, I become more sensitive, that is more vulnerable. And I need more cops, I need more army uh, officers, I need more uh, uh, informants to watch my stuff because I don't want anything to happen to my stuff. And so the rich create an apparatus of control, of police, of, of government to protect their stuff. And the rest of us buy into it because we want to have stuff too, Rousseau thinks. We want to have stuff. And that corrupts us because it's not a natural desire. It is a desire from our vanity that we want to lord it over someone else, just like those rich guys lord it over us. I think that's, that's all we have time for today. We'll, we'll pick things up next time when we move on uh, the, the, along the syllabus to the next set of readings. See you then.